At second swing, when we do our club testing, we have something close to a robot in Thomas Campbell hitting the shot. But what if we had an actual robot? Well, today we're down here in sunny Arizona at Sun Ridge Canyon Golf Club with cool clubs to see how they use robot testing to find out all the information about new golf clubs. Hey golfers, we are now inside the very awesome facility here at Cool Clubs and I'm joined by a very special guest. This is Mark Timms, the CEO and founder of Cool Clubs. Uh, and you see behind us is the robot itself. And so we're very excited to have kind of Mark walk us through a little bit of the process and then maybe we'll tie in a little bit of data here initially. But Mark, uh, this is a really awesome facility and this robot looks like it can do a lot of things for you. Yeah, it's been fun actually. We've been uh, probably about a year, we've been robot testing everything. So okay. we obviously player testing in our fittings, but it's nice to have robot data to compare one club to another. Right. You right. know, it's hard when you get down to two clubs, you know, which one's better, you Exactly, know. exactly. Uh, personally, myself, I kind of look at the robot data at the end yeah. of the tournament, which is the best club for me, so right, it definitely right. helps. And I think there's a lot of golfers out there that are kind of like you that really like to dive into the numbers, and when you have a robot that can collect hundreds and thousands of shots, that can be a huge advantage. So we got this behind, and kind of just walk us through the actual process itself of setting it up, what you're looking for, how do you, you know, uh, manipulate a little bit to get the data that you want. Right, so basically we set the robot up, and this test we were looking at today is at 80 miles an hour for, mm -hmm. a, okay. for a seven iron. So uh, we do multiple speed tests, so, yeah, so, sure. you know, so. but that's the most common one. Yeah. That's what most people are around. So we set the robot up for that. Uh, we'll have it hit a few times. Um, we'll get exactly right speed. We're looking for an attack angle of zero, or yeah. minus two, so we're down a couple of degrees. Uh, zero path and zero face. Okay. So we keep hitting balls until we get that square, and then whatever that, that straight is, uh, that's our zero. Okay. Uh, then from there, obviously, we have this uh, machine shop table basically here, and this has you know really fine adjustments, obviously. So yep. we can rotate it, and we go, we move towards the toe, towards the heel, and up and down. On an iron, we do six positions. Okay. Um, we don't you know, on a driver. We actually use nine because it's nine points. But sure. on an iron, you can't hit too far up because you right. hit the ground first. You hit the big so, ball first. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah. it gets, gets in the way. So that's what we test for that. Okay, perfect. And then I noticed too, you actually have. Trackman and Foresight in here too. Yeah, they're both really good. Uh, we use both in our fittings. Um, uh, they both do some things better than others, right? So uh, mm -hmm. the club data for Foresight, because it's actually looking right at impact, is, is really really great. But you know, Trackman actually tracks the ball till it lands. So yeah, right. some advantages to that too, especially when we're doing short shots and mm -hmm. spin and, and all that stuff to get the actual landing angle and stuff right. is, is pretty important. Right. And then uh, talk about like an actual, you know, in the, the format of your testing and, and collecting the data, like. How many shots do you go through? Like, how many times is this thing swinging? To a lot, get the to be honest. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. there's a bunch of swings to set it up correctly and stuff to yeah. get together. And depending on the test uh, on drivers, we do nine shots of each okay. in each position once it's right. centered. Okay. Uh, and then we do that at multiple speeds. And then we do a, another test to see if it's draw fade biased. Um, so there's probably you know two or three hundred shots yeah. for one club. Okay. Wow. Uh, and that gets sorted down and, yeah. and, and down and, and then, down and down as we show you. Right, too. you kind of refine the data a little right. bit afterwards. Right. But so, and then one of the things too, we, uh, you know, I noticed you got this T here, right? And you mentioned yep. the multiple positions on the face right. that the ball will you know, make contact so you can measure. So how do you go about, because like, it's probably got to be very fine kind of yeah. adjustments that you have Yeah, to make. you'll see on here actually, let me pop this down here. Uh, but you'll see on if you see on the face actually we put marks on exactly where the thing is hit. So, yeah. Okay. So we double check and actually test it as well. Yeah. Um, but we put a jig on here as Roman probably showed you. Uh, yep. Make these marks and then we hit it all the spots. Okay. Perfect. Yep. And then I mean, you, I, you've noticed too that you know like you mentioned on the iron you can't really go high in the face. Cause right. Right. You know, right. A, a golfer's going to. And there's hit. some positions we don't really use a lot. I mean, low heel is horrible for every club. Yeah. You know, if you throw it into the averages, it makes everything look terrible. So <laughs> okay. I don't really look at that very very heavily. Yeah. And we weight different things. Obviously. See the center sure. hits, we, we weight more and right, right. Um, you know, toe and heel shots that are more common. Okay. We Perfect. weight higher. So and then are you guys uh, focusing primarily on irons and drivers or are you gonna work? We do everything, woods, right? Wedges, so, yeah, you know. it's all a little different. So drivers we do nine point tests. Yeah. Um, we do uh, ninety five miles an hour is where we do the majority of our tests. Uh, okay. but we'll also do every ten miles an hour all the okay. way down and Got we'll you. also do a fair amount of testing at hundred and ten and also at eighty. Okay. Um, so all that together, you know, we look at different speeds. You know, some yeah. drivers work better at different speeds, to be honest. Right, um, right. Yeah, we had one and last year that worked way better at higher speeds than at <laughs> exactly. lower yeah, speeds. Exactly, yeah, I know. That's, that's exactly good why, to know. That's why they all, right. uh, you know, manufacturers release different models. Yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. Exactly yeah. what it's yeah. for. Uh, one thing I'm curious about, too, now, because um, I've, I've actually been fortunate enough to see a little bit of, like, the setups that, like, manufacturers, right, and the robot testing that they do. Right. So 
Did, did you model your setup here kind of after theirs? Or did you make um, some I don't think we model it first? necessarily after. Yeah. It's just kind of the only way to do it, right? Yeah. If you do everything correctly and you kind of eliminate all the variables you can, right. I mean, there's only one way to go about it, really. So everybody does it pretty much the okay. same. Okay. I mean, there'll be different parameters to set up, right? So, right. Uh, you know, we use some pretty basic parameters. You know, yeah. Like a driver, we use zero angle tax, zero path. Right. And we can change all that stuff and you can look at different things. But in general, the process and how we look through it from the yeah. manufacturers is exactly the same. Yeah. Well, and then the advantage you guys have too is yeah. you have every manufacturer here. Yeah, that makes our job harder, right? You know, you're, so yeah, right. There's, there's more, the more stuff right. to test, more yeah. golf. You, know, you have every golf right. ball here, you have every head. So, uh, and then, so we, you mentioned that the test here that we've been running here most recently, recent club come out, yep. uh, was I-230 from Ping. Yep. And so you've got some data here. And maybe walk a little bit through that and kind of just the key things that you're looking for. Yeah, well, I'll actually show on the screen, actually. Okay, I'll show you how, how it comes along and what we look at, right? So, yeah. obviously, we've got the foresight and the track man here, but yep. the actual data uh, ends up going into an Excel sheet for now. Um, we'll sure. show you back in the store what we do with it later. Um, but basically, we look at, you know, some of the more important parameters I kind of highlighted for you. So, yep. obviously, it's the Ping G30. Uh, we use exactly the same shaft for all of them. Sure. So, at the 80-mile-an-hour test, we use a KBS Tour 110. Yeah. It kind of fits that speed. I mean, the shaft doesn't really do a lot in a robot because it kind of negates it yeah, in any yeah, shaft, yeah. but, you know, to make everything sync. We also use Pro V1s uh, for testing. We use the, uh, you know, the radar ball. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, RCT ball. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, even if we're not doing uh, TrackMan, we still use it. Oh, yeah. Just keep everything the same. Sure. Um, then, obviously, we look at the robot parameters. So, these are the setups of the robot, you know, how many amps. It's initial speed, it's ramp speed. Oh, sure. That's how it's set up. Okay. So we set up, you know, they're all apples to apples. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of a note stuff. Just to make sure, sure the robot it. makes the same swing yeah, every exactly. time, right? Nothing changes there. Right. Sure. And then you know, if you look at the, some of the numbers that are important, right? So ball speed uh, is kind of an important one. Uh, we look at total spin, you know, how fast it stops, yep. basically. Um, you know, total carry, we look at probably more than distance. Mm -hmm. You know, distance is, a, a, you know, total distance is not as important as carry is for, for me. Um, yeah. Offline yards. As I said, we kind of get the thing all set up to do zero path, <clears throat> zero face, yep. square, square. And wherever that is, in this case, that was offline three, that becomes our zero. Yeah. So we'll actually have in our next sheets uh, a net yards. So yep. off of that, where it all balls go. I got you. Okay. Uh, the same angle is kind of a big one. That's stopping power for yep. the most part. That's probably sure. more important than spin. Yep. Spin affects that a lot, I mean, actually quite a bit. Uh, and then we look at efficiency. I know how hot is the iron. I mean, yep. a lot of that has to do with how loft is, right? Right. I mean, I really look at kind of dispersion right to left more than which is the longest iron. Yeah. Um, it's easy to make a couple longer, just sure. crank the loft up, but right. uh, doesn't do everybody and you know, help right. anybody. So. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So, and then the, the cool thing is then you can take this data and you have it available for, you know, maybe the fittings, right? Yeah, yeah. Our fitters have all this and data, so, so they can, can look it up. And makes your recommendations based right. on, uh, you know, for example, if someone maybe hits off the heel a little bit yeah. more often. And you, you can, can look at the data which one's from best for that. this iron or this driver off the yep. heel and use that data. Absolutely. I mean, for myself, I do that, to be honest. Really? I, I couldn't decide what iron to play this year. And, um, you know, when I hit balls, you know, I look at it, I hit the ball pretty much in the center yeah. most of the time. If I miss it, which is quite often, actually, <laughs> it's probably by 30%, yeah. I hit on the toe. And that's the only two places I hit it. So okay. when I look at clubs for myself, yeah. uh, I kind of look through the data on the center and the toe, and that's sure. about it. And I kind of do a 70-30 ruling on that. You know. Awesome. Well, I mean, Mark, this place, this place is awesome. Uh, facility suite, you got the robot here. Is there a chance we could maybe see a fired up and see a shot yep, here? Yep, let's uh, run a few tests. We'll uh, grab Roman and have him set up and uh, see how we do it. Sweet. Yep. Nice. All right, well, let's take a swing here okay. and get this going. Perfect. So stand back, ready? Wow. It's got a slow back swing. <laughs> <laughs> a little pause at the top. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You see it on the screen here. That's oh, pretty man. close to the center line. Oh my word! You know, if that's the center line. We're uh, <laughs> we're pretty dialed in on this one. So <laughs> yeah. So we're ready to start running the test now. Okay. okay. If you look on the face, actually, you'll see you know, that's that's dead center. So. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We're good. Wow, unbelievable. Well, Mark, thank you for bringing us into the facility today. I think this is really cool, and to see you know maybe the kind of the future almost of, of club fitting here. All this data, all this information. Um, with the robot testing. This is really cool and a uh, huge pleasure for us to be able to see it in action here. So yeah. thank you very much. You're welcome. It's kind of a sneak peek. We're going to have a lot of this stuff on the internet so people can you know, help them decide what clubs they had. So Perfect. That'll come at the end of the year sometime. <laughs>